Welcome back everyone, I should have done this video 50 days ago, but I got sent a wrong 1 plus 7 T, they actually sent me like a 1 plus 6 T or something like that, I don't remember. So I had to return that, and then the 1 plus 8s came out, and yada yada yada, long story short, we finally got the 1 plus 7 T, the actual one in the house. So we're going to go ahead and review it, and I'll be completely honest, this phone is still a very very good device, you know, this thing just came out in September of last year, so it's not even a year old yet, which is really cool, so there's a lot of advantages, a lot of disadvantages, all that stuff, I will be comparing it to the OnePlus 8 and OnePlus 8 Pro probably tomorrow and the day after, so keep that in mind while you're going through this. Now, the OnePlus 7T, I actually picked mine up for around $550. I think they're even cheaper on OnePlus's website, so keep that in mind. But on Amazon, they're selling for about $520-ish, so $520 to $530. The prices will probably end up going down very soon because I think, like I said, I think OnePlus is selling them for cheaper on their website. So I'll find the cheapest ones on Amazon and link them down in the description below so you guys can get them from there and help support the channel at the same time. Now with the OnePlus 7T, like I stated, it came out in September of last year in 2019 and it was succeeding the OnePlus 7 and 7 Pro, which I think the 7 Pro was even crazier than the 7 and I think a lot of people think that and the 7 Pro to the 7T Pro was a little bit of an update too I mean I've owned the 7T Pro I already reviewed it and I think that was a great phone too but but I think the OnePlus 7T is still a really cool phone when it comes down to it. So on the front, you still have a 6.55 inch fluid AMOLED display. It is a 1080p panel, which I'm totally okay with. The OnePlus 8 still has a 1080p panel, so I really don't even think it's that big of a deal. You do have a little bit of bezel around the display, and it's crazy that I'm even saying that because it really doesn't even have any bezel if you think about it. But compared to the OnePlus 8 and the OnePlus 7T Pro, you know, it has a little bit, which is not that big of a deal. You have a little bit of that teared drop notch which is so nice i mean yeah i'd rather have it gone and all that stuff but dude the notch on this thing still is like almost not even visible which is really cool now a really cool thing about this specific display is that you do have that 90 hertz capability which i don't think a lot of people really care about or maybe they don't even think about when they're using this device but that's still a really cool feature i think you know with the OnePlus 7 Pro bringing that and then eventually OnePlus bringing that to the more cheaper lineup with a 7T is a really, really cool thing and I really do hype up OnePlus for that. Now, is it the best looking panel? Is it the best 1080p display? Probably not, but I think it's a really, really good panel at the end of the day and I think for sure whatever you're going to do with it is going to be perfectly fine and definitely when it comes down to the panel, it gets a thumbs up for me on my books. On the bottom, you do have that USB Type-C port, which is really cool. And on the back, you have a very interesting camera setup. So you have, you know, a triple camera setup on the back, which I think is really cool. But what's really, really interesting about it is that it's like a circular shape. Usually we have them in like a rectangular kind of shape or whatever the case is. And this one was actually in a circle, which I think is really, really cool. It just makes it look so different. And back in the day, I think last year, I was making those renders of what I thought this phone was going to look like based on all the specs and leaks and all that stuff. And, and even me rendering things like this based on images that other people made, I was like, that's really, really interesting. And I still think, I mean, when I look at it, there's not a lot of phones in the market that look like this specific phone, which I think is really cool and really shows what OnePlus was kind of showing at the time. So it still feels like a pretty good phone in the hand too, which is I'm really happy about. No IP certification though, so keep that in mind. Again, not a deal breaker or anything, but still something to consider at the end of the day. So in terms of the outside, that really pretty much covers it up for the most part. Not an ugly phone by any means. I think it looks really, really good. And even the design language, it still holds up completely. It's not even a year old yet, and it doesn't even feel like it's that old either. So in terms of the outside, that really pretty much covers it. Now hitting on the software, this thing has really only started off with one version of Android, which is Android 10 with Oxygen OS 10. And like I said before, man, Oxygen OS is one of my favorite Android versions out there. It's such a good version of software. It's so minimal. It just gets the job done. Nothing like that's all in your face. Now I pray to God every single day. I hope that OnePlus does not change this. I hope they don't start adding random bloatware. I think they started adding or like random apps here and there, but if they go to the extent of like what Samsung does and all these other manufacturers, I really hope they don't do that. That's one main reason why I like OnePlus phones so much is because of their software. Now, software lifecycle wise, you know, these things do last quite a bit of time still, but with the 7T, usually with the T lineup at the end of the year, you know, towards the ending, they get the same software lifecycle as the ones previously. So in the previous years, so the 5 and the 5T got the same, the 3 and the 3T I think got the same, the 6 and 6T are going to be getting the same. So keep that in mind, this thing, you know, 
even though it's a little bit newer, it's still going to be lasting as long as the OnePlus 7 and 7 Pro, which is still going to be a long time compared to a lot of other Android manufacturers out there. Their software is great, their software lifecycle is great, and their software updates are really, really good at the end of the day too. So I don't know if you're able to root and custom ROM these things because I've never really looked at custom ROMing any of my OnePlus devices because if I custom ROM my device, a lot of things that I would, you know, custom ROM for are already on this device. The minimal software, the stock Android feel, and you're pretty much already getting that on the OnePlus 7T, which is really cool. So in terms of the software, I'll definitely say thumbs up for sure. This thing is super, super awesome. It, it deserves all the attention. And, and like I said, the software is one of my favorite things about it for sure. Now hitting on the performance, this thing has the Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 Plus chipset, an octa-core CPU, and Adreno 640 GPU. And there were two different models of this, the 128 gig model and the 256 gig model, and both have eight gigs of RAM. Now this is one of my sadder aspects of this phone for sure because I wish there was like a 512 variant. I wish there was like at least like a 256 for the base model. This thing doesn't have a micro SD card slot either, which kind of sucks. So again, not a deal break or anything, but it is kind of a weird thing. It's like, you know, they could have done a better job at the end of the day, in my opinion on that. But performance wise, I think it actually does a really, really good job of managing the performance and everything that it has within it. When I was loading things up, I mean, it did a really good job and there's really not too much to complain about. I mean, I wish there was so then I can, you know, address it, but it's a very smooth performing phone really anything I did with it at the end of the day, it handled it perfectly fine. Loading apps, closing apps, all that stuff. I mean, the standard stuff you would do with the device, it does it perfectly fine, which I'm really, really happy about. Now, is it the best and fastest performing device? Not really, but I will tell you, and this is probably something that I probably shouldn't say, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Like at the 90 hertz refresh rate, I've been saying this for so long, it gives the impression that the phone is faster than it is. You know, even though it's not, I believe that it's still loading the apps at the same time and everything. Thing, but just the capability of turning that on, it makes the experience so much smoother and just feels so much faster. And I feel like if you put a 90 or a 120, even just a 90 hertz refresh rate on like an iPhone 5S, I feel like that phone will fly by. Same thing with like a OnePlus One or really any phone. If you just did that, I think it would just add so much more just fluidity to the whole entire experience. And even though it's not fast or anything, it just gives the impression that it is. It's really hard to explain. If you guys have never used one, I would recommend doing it. And if you guys have used one, you guys might know what I'm talking about. So in terms of performance, still great. RAM is still great. It, you know, handles a lot of apps in the background for the most part. Not the fastest thing in the world, but still definitely feels like an extremely smooth device at the end of the day. So in terms of performance, that pretty much covers it. Now hitting on the cameras, like I said, a triple camera setup on the back. You have a 48 megapixel wide angle lens, a 12 megapixel telephoto lens, and a 16 megapixel ultra wide sensor. And for sure, the camera gets a thumbs up in my books for sure. Again, you can do 4K at 60. I mean, not the best camera, you know, I'm not going to lie, but it definitely gets the job done. You know, everything I did with it for the most part, it handled extremely good. You know, I'm not a photographer, I'm not a filmmaker, I don't really do those type of things, but the photos this thing takes are pretty decent from my eyes. You have a 16 megapixel front facing camera, you can do 1080p videos on that, and that might be the only gripe when it comes down to the camera. Nowadays we have like 4K at 60, even just 4K on the front camera would have been good enough, but they still stuck with 1080p. The OnePlus 8 and 8 Pro still have 1080p on those as well, so really weird. I don't know why they did that, but it is what it is. It also saves them money at the end of the day, so in terms of the camera, I'll say it's definitely good enough for a lot of people. Now ending it off with the battery life, you have a 3,800 mAh battery, which is cool and I like that. I think it's a, actually a pretty decent sized battery on this thing. The only downside of this specific battery would probably be the lack of wireless charging. Forget reverse wireless charging and all that like the OnePlus 8 Pro has. The wireless charging is like just like a given. I mean, dude, all phones almost have that nowadays and the fact that these phones don't have it is insane. They eventually brought it in with the OnePlus 8 and 8 Pro, but I just think it's still a weird thing to kind of, you know, not add to your device, but it is what it is. What are we going to do about it? So when it comes down to that, I mean, I'll definitely say thumbs up in my books for the battery life. It's better than you might think, but in terms of the battery features and everything, there's not really too many to go around. So in terms of that, that pretty much covers it. Now to sum up the whole entire video and to answer the question, I mean, is the OnePlus 7T still worth it in 2020? I will say, you know, probably, you know, I think it's still worth it if this is the only phone you can get or if you really want this phone, like it's a tremendous phone. But I think from, you know, even other phones from different offerings, phones like the OnePlus 8, 
the Samsung Galaxy S20, phones like that, those might be a little bit more expensive. But the OnePlus 8, honestly, is probably only like 100 or something dollars more expensive than this. Samsung Galaxy S20s are selling for like less than 800 bucks on Amazon right now. So, I mean, the choice is yours, but I would probably end up picking one of those phones up before I would pick this phone up. And I would really pick up a OnePlus 8 over this one probably any day. So it is what it is, but I'll go ahead and leave a OnePlus 8 and a Samsung Galaxy S20 in the description below so you guys can get them from there and also help the channel out at the same time. But that's really pretty much it. If you guys have any other questions or anything, let me know in the comment section as well. Hit the like button, that means so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count. So it means so much if you guys could hit that. Also check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my second channel. All those links are linked down below. I'd really appreciate if you guys could check it out. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.